Yes, excellent. All right. Hello. 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 I'm Zach or Nick or any other names. Thank you. Um, I wonder if I should probably try a microphone from the this time. My throat's getting a little sore because, hey, it's getting towards the end of the cruise and we do lots of talking on this cruise. My mother is pleased that she's not on this cruise. Just as I talk far too much. There we go. Okay. That mostly works, I think. I'll do the obligatory. Can everybody hear me? Yes! What? Can nobody not hear me? No. You will fail at Ruby and Logic. Okay. So this is Locksport, hopefully. Um, not quite on my game today, but we'll get there. Uh, you've all got some transparent padlocks and lockpicks and stuff, and um, and if you've missed out temporarily, after a, pay attention after we've gone through this, we'll see if we can sort you out or something. Um, right, excuse me a minute while I'm just trying to remember what we're doing. Okay, so yes, oh, this slide deck was uh, the open organization of lockpickers or tool um, makes their slide deck available. This slide deck is good to of them, so yeah, thank you very much tool. So is everybody ready to learn about lockpicking? Right, lock picking is fun, fun, fun. I know you heard it was going to be very boring, but you came here anyway, and I appreciate it. It was a trick. It's actually fun. Um, we have rules. I know it's sad, and I just have to. I have to now be a little bit grumpy. So after my first lock picking class, I came to my attention that somebody, and it may not have been somebody from the class. I don't know, but somebody attempted to pick a lock on one of the shadow event things, a vending machine or something, and broke the lock. Okay? Really grumpy, because if it was somebody from one of my courses, rule number one, do not pick someone else's locks. Do not pick a lock that you have not been given explicit permission to pick. I'm going to reinforce this because if people go and break other people's locks, this will be the last lock sport. I won't be able to run it ever again. And I know, you know it would be very sad. So don't pick someone else's locks unless you've been given explicit permission. And I grant you permission to pick the locks here. Do not pick your own locks if you rely on them. Every time you pick locks, all the locks you're picking today, you're actually damaging them a little bit. Um, especially when you're new and you're learning and stuff, you're definitely damaging them. If you decide, hey, I've learned how to pick locks, and this guy on this cruise taught me how, and I've gone to Sparrows or Southport, and I've picked up a lock kit set, and I've got a front door, and that looks like a convenient lock, and it's mounted in the right place, and wait, do not pick someone else. It's my own lock, and I grant myself permission to pick it. <laughs> awesome, I've complied with rule number one. So I'm going to totally pick it. You're weakening your front door lock. You're making it easier for the next person to come along and pick it. And you risk breaking your pick off inside the lock. If you break your pick in the transparent padlock, I'll just laugh. It's fine. At you. Not with you. At you. <laughs> but it's fine. If you break your pick off in your front door, you will have to call a locksmith. The locksmith will come out and the locksmith will judge you. <laughs> and the locksmith will say, what were you trying to do? And you will say, I was trying to pick my front door. I'm sorry, what was that? I was trying to pick my front door. Uh -huh. And they will look at you and they will judge you and then they'll charge you a fortune to get that lock pick out. So don't pick your own front door lock. Go buy a master lock from the hardware store. Right, those are the two grumpy rules. Very sorry I have to do them. I'm even more sorry that I had to do them. Right, there are three kinds of ways of opening locks. Lock picking, quick and dirty, covert and high tech. Lock picking is what we do. Quick and dirty is what criminals do. Covert and high tech is what spies do. Locksport, or me in this case, provides the knowledge and means on how to learn to lockpick. This is the fun. Quick and dirty provide the knowledge, but not the means. 99% of the time, quick and dirty opening of a lock is a hammer to anything around the lock, because the locks are hard. And it turns out the locks are mounted to things that are usually not nearly as hard. Covert and high tech, that's what spies do. I don't talk about what spies do without at least three glasses of scotch. Yeah. <laughs> I won't talk about the spies without three scotches, at least. It's my rule, I'm sorry, I just 
have, I have boundaries. All right, let me go to the bar real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Good scotch too. <laughs> Top shelf. Uh, actually, the, the shelf depends on which country you want to know about. You know, if it's like, you know, US, Bourbon will do fine. But if you want to know about a real intelligence agency like New Zealand, yeah. then we need to go to the top shelf. <laughs> so I've got to get that dig in there. My Bay Area are local now, so I probably can't use that much. Um, right, there are a couple of different types of locks. There are doorknobs, padlocks, deadbolts. You've seen all these locks around. The mechanism is all the same. If you look at the transparent padlock in your hand and you look down the front of it, you are seeing <coughs> exactly that. Um, behind the scenes, what you're seeing is this. And is this going to work or am I going to regret this? Hang on, I'm going to try and save my voice. Well, oh, this is going to work and I can probably get to the screen. Awesome. So, the red here is the key pin. The blue is the driver pin. The reason why the the plug, which is this yellow circle, the reason why it won't turn is because the driver pin is in the way. Um, and that's what stops a lock opening. That simple. Uh, this animation is not going to work because it would <coughs> really be better if we had a better map. Right, so if you attempt to rotate this, these are all animations, so we're going to visualize them. Then it will rotate. We'll try and rotate, this blue driver pin will be in the way and it will stop it. If we were to put the right key in, it would lift the key pin and the driver pin, and the spring would obviously resist, and lift it up until this line between the key and the driver reaches this line at the top of the plug. This line is called the shear line, and that line reaches the same as the plug. At that point, the plug can rotate, and in this one pin lock, we have now opened it. All we have to do is lift the key pin to the right height. So one pin locks not very secure. Yeah, that's an animation showing with a key. Right, it turns out that most locks have more than one pin, although I think I've got some two pins here. So this is the sideways view. If you're looking at your transparent locks, you will see that there appears to either be six or seven. There is probably, looks like seven, but the seventh doesn't actually <coughs> exist. It's a pretend one that, just pretend it doesn't exist. There are six pins. In this lock there are five, as you can see, here are the five key pins and the five driver pins at the top. In those transparent padlocks you're looking at, you will probably initially only be able to see the driver pins because remember, you can't see anything below here in that transparent, but when you lift up the pins, you don't have to start playing with the transparents, but I know you all are anyway. <laughs> if you lift up some of the transparent, throw the pins, you will see the key pin reveal because you'll see the little line that shows up. That's that line you want lined up along there. Da, 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 don't worry, we'll, I'll come back and teach you through all of this hollow stuff. We're just going to go through animation. It's awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, so when the key goes in, as you can imagine, when a key goes in, I think I did this last time. But I totally didn't work. It was funny. So we're going to try it again. Ooh, see it? Here's a key, and I can make the shadow sort of go in the lock. No. So um, keys obviously have different heights. And so the key cut makes this one rise to this level, this one rise a little bit, this one rise a lot, this one rise even more, and this one rise the middle amount, and the whole thing fits. The keys correspond to the key pin heights. Using a lock pick. Okay, we're not really going to try and show that here. So why is lock picking possible? Okay, in a perfect world, when you look down on the top of the barrel, and those, where these pins are, pin stacks, we're looking down directly on top. In the perfect world, this is a perfect straight line. Manufacturing is absolutely perfect, micron perfect. Nothing ever has got any deviations or damage or anything. And we all live in the perfect world. In the real world, this is what the top of a lock looks like. Nice and zoomed in. This is not, this is not brand new, but it's not very old. All these little divots and all these dimps and stuff, they're all manufacturing defects. That's what a lock looks like. It's not perfect. The driver pins I was talking about, those nice little blue pins in the real world, they have all these little bits and bumps and stuff and they're just not perfect. That means that, I really need to redo this slide. Imagine that this is much more exaggerated. These, la these holes aren't perfectly aligned. And because they're not perfectly aligned, if we attempt to rotate the plug, only one of those holes 
will hit the hit, only one of the pins will hit the hole first because it's the hole that's the furthest out. And that's going to be what's called, we're going to jump ahead on the slide deck because animations don't work. So one of these drivers will actually be pushed up against first. And you try and rotate, remember I showed that slide where the driver pin was being stopping the plug from rotating? Only one of these will bind first because these aren't a perfect straight line. We put our lock pick in, and we go in here with a nice little hook lock pick, the little red handled one if you're uh, wondering which pick to use, it's a good one. You go in, you lift it, and because this isn't binding, it'll move up, and it'll come down, and it'll just be springy. That one's not binding, that one's not binding, and as you lift this one here, or whichever one it is in your lock, that every lock's different, you'll lift it up and you'll feel it a little bit tighter, a little bit of pressure, you can feel it sort of drag, and that means that this driver pin is binding. As you lift it up, once it hits that shear line, suddenly click, you feel it, you hear it, depending on the lock, you know, whichever, and depending on your skill set, you can either feel it, hear it, and with the transparency, see it. And the driver pin stays at the top, and the key pin drops down. And it stays at the top because now it's sitting on a ledge, a tiny small ledge, instead of dropping down. And then one of the other pins will start binding. And you do through it again. And you go through each and individual pin. And once you've got them all lifted up, oh, and that reminds me, as you're playing with these locks at the moment as I'm speaking, if you get your padlock open, I want you to do a nice loud voice interrupt and just say, open. Open! <laughs> excellent. Yes, excellent. If you have opened your lock and you're going, now what I do? Cover the lock with your hand so you can't see the pin stack and then try again. And keep doing it so you can't actually see. You're not cheating. Pretend it's a real padlock. Right, and this is me basically talking about setting and binding, uh, setting multiple pins. Oh yes, overlifting. So, if you go and put the lock pick in and put the tension on, and I'll come back to all this, and then you lift up the red key pin, and that causes the blue to lift, and you keep lifting the red key pin all the way past that shear line, the red key pin will now be jammed up above. So you'll have the spring, the blue driver pin, and then the red key pin. At this point, the red key pin will not drop unless you release the tension and all the pins that you've just set have dropped. Lifting it up above the shear line is called oversetting. Oversetting is really annoying because you sit there and you get it working, you think you've got it perfect and then nothing's working, you're not sure why. So you drop all the pins and you try again and it works and you go, I overset on those pins. Uh, right. Raking tools. I've got some rakes, I can show that later. But um, effectively, raking is moving backwards and forwards. Yeah, demo. Right, uh, so that's the hook. I suggest that you use the hook um, unless you want to pour the half diamond, which is this one. That's a snake rake, which you don't have. Um, personally, I prefer the hook. Some people prefer the half diamond. There are techniques for both. Um, what's up, little man? You can't get it open yet? Okay, tell you what, in a few minutes I'll come help you if you'd like, or you can keep reading, I don't mind. I'll come help you in a few minutes, okay? Excellent. Right, uh, half time. Ah, yes. So, you may have noticed and heard me say that you've got six pins in that lock, that's really awesome. However, um, this lock you don't know how many pins you have in it. So one of the things you can do is take that half diamond, put it in upside down so the point is stacking upside down, just pointing downwards, lift all the pins up as high as you can, lift them up and then pull the pick out. And as you pull them out, you will hear the pins drop. And what you're doing there is you're just counting how many pins dropped, how many pins are inside this lock, because you can't really pick a padlock or any lock until you know how many pins are inside it. Yep, yep, yep. Right, okay, so if you haven't yet worked out that little L bar that's in your um, pick bag, that's called a tension tool. And if you've been trying to pick the lock without the tension tool, you probably haven't been succeeding. So, that's all right. Um, I've stolen my hair, everything I have here. Going well? Uh, thank you, I'm sure I can probably find another one myself. I will be with you shortly, young man. Right. So, 
The tension tool, which is the L shape, it's got a little green handle there. Uh, I'm going to put this down and speak. Tension tool, as in this sort of diagram here, goes in like this and turns. Well, you put pressure on, I should say. This diagram is showing that a bad form, which is that you're using your thumb to pull. You really want to be using your finger to push, which will be the next slide, which is cool. That's a good way of doing it. You're pushing. Uh, you can see the finger here is, is quite close to the plug, so that's not so great. The best way is to put your finger out as far as you can, just like the person in the uh, photo there. Yeah. Ah, turning pressure, right. So with these padlocks, the transparents, it's actually, you generally speaking, use some pressure, it's probably fine. Um, they are designed to be uh, attacked reasonably, reasonably easily. Um, That's for artificial intelligence. Yeah, it's, a, it's a artificial intelligence. <laughs> That's a good typo. Good spot, Batman. Good spot. You are like the first person Open! Open, yay! Open. Right. So, the, um, generally speaking, if you're wondering if you're using too much pressure, you are probably using too much pressure. Except with the transparent padlocks you've got here, which as I said are slightly different from anything else like this. Your finger is quite, if its finger is white, it means you've got a lot of pressure on there. And what's going to, what that's going to do is it's going to cause more multiple pins to bind, or it's actually going to cause the pins to jam. Awesome! So, better to have too little pressure. If you have too little pressure and you lift up each of the pins and none of them binds, you can put a little bit more pressure on. If you put too much pressure on, you might overset a pin. We're almost there, almost. Turning tool, I showed you where that was. Ah, yes, the plastics are notoriously bad for this. Um, I've given you turning tools which are hopefully, well, which appear to be the right size, but the turning tool, if it's at the bottom of the lock, the metal can actually bind with the bottom of the lock itself, and it can mean that you think you're putting pressure, but instead of putting pressure on the plug, you're simply putting pressure on the bottom of the lock there. The plastics are, of course, really um, bad for this because plastic and metal, turns out metal wins. Which direction should you turn? Okay, so hopefully if you've been playing the transparency, you will know that you turn padlocks to the clockwise or to the right. So padlocks, almost always, I say almost always because like there is that one point, point zero zero one percent of padlocks that don't. Padlocks always turn clockwise. So if you're looking at a padlock, you're wondering which way to open it, it's clockwise. Otherwise, for all the other locks that I've got lying around, they actually open, all the other locks I've got here, the non-pad locks, open both directions. Um, when it's mounted on a wall, it depends on how it's mounted, etc. Uh, but today, unless it's a pad lock, you can open it any which direction. And if you've tried opening a lock and it's not behaving nicely, if you've got one of these and it's not behaving nicely, you can't get it open, try it the other direction and be easier. Right, so. There are only two more, two more things. First one is that lock picking, you have to relax. Lock picking is not a high stress activity, unless you're in the movies. And the last one is, as this person here wonderfully demonstrated, when you get an open and a nice loud voice say open, so that everybody can hear and you can all feel like you're actually succeeding. And that's about the presentation. Now. Those of you who have been doing it and have got some opens, look at the person beside you. Open! Excellent. Yay. Look at the person beside you. If they are maybe not quite holding the padlock in the right way, or maybe that turning tool is in upside down or something, you could totally like just help them out and help them figure out which way it needs to go. It would be awesome. It saves me having to get to them. If you've got an open, if you've picked your transparent padlock a few times without looking at the pins, then you can come up, I've got a bunch of other padlocks, we can start giving you more complicated stuff. Um, hello. You want to come up? Okay. So, does anyone have any... Open! Awesome. Yay. I 
sure you want to ask the questions things, but that's going to take ages and people want the locks. So we're going to now do the lock exchange stuff and um, come up and talk to me in a few minutes if you've got questions. Right. Okay. I'm going to pull up the chair. Okay. Right.